Good time, honey. A uh, hundred proof, bottled and bond. <laughs> Something funny happened? <laughs> gonna happen. The cops are gonna find Howard's hat and coat a couple of miles downstream, a gun on one road, a magazine on another. A ditch stolen car, it'll be no Howard, no Maze, and no Kelly. <laughs> and, no, and no Tommy. <laughs> Glad you had a good time. I wonder what this is all about. What do you think the police want with us? I don't know, Harriet. Nobody's told me yet. Just a check. <laughs> Hello, officer. Well, <laughs> go ahead, Teddy, dear. Now, you show this nice officer your license. I don't need your license, sir. Did you see anything of a 1931 Cadillac sedan? Black, three men in it? Did we? I think we did. Yes, we did. Right up the road, about three miles. Was that a maroon car? <laughs> well, anyhow, we saw a car with three people in it. I'm sure we did. 
Didn't we, Teddy dear? Nope. We didn't see one. Thank you, sir. Sorry you've been delayed. <laughs> Honey, you oughtn't to look like that. You ought to smile pretty. You know, kitten, I'm going to get you a nice little white mouse to play with. Trouble? Your license? Get out of the car. Open up the trunk. If there's something you're looking for, maybe I can help you find it. No, no, give him the keys. Here, open it yourself. Seems like you're pushing hard at me, mister. It makes me think you maybe got a reason. Go ahead, search the car. Search us, too. You think those brass buttons you got give you a hunting permit on respectable citizens, don't you? You search them, push them around, eye up their women? Joe, found the Cadillac sedan about eight miles northwest of the highway. Car switch? No sign yet, but the bird's scattered. This block's canceled. Okay. I'd like to take you up on your offer. I really would. Darling, you're trying to push us into a cell? Well, he was easy. Cops like to turn you sick scared just by staring at you. They start you to run in and hide, and then they laugh in their fat guts. And they beat the cement with a nightstick to make you run faster. Well, that might work with booze hounds and bums and kids stealing apples, but not with me. Not with me. Come on, let's go. No sugar. The cops scared you. You don't listen to me so good sometimes. And stop calling me cute names and showing your garters. Oh, Georgie, you know I don't wear stockings. You like to be looked at, don't you? You like to be petted. You like soft things like silks and satins. And fur for your neck. Well, you just remember, baby. Something soft can choke you right into a soft death. The car ready for Maze? Yeah. They'll reach the highway in about an hour. You pick them up. Okay. Uh, gas? Fill it up. Wild Mountain. Hey, you got one of those overgrown tomcats in one of your cages? Nope, it's the real McCoy, George. Caught him on a little trip about a month ago. You're a real big game hunter, ain't you? The time was before I caught the fever. Before that big striped cat in India savaged me. <laughs> striped cat out of a bottle. <laughs> hey, Harry, they tell me the drunks that slip far enough drink anything with alcohol in it. Even hair tonic. You know, you stink of it. What I say is true. Don't matter if you believe me. That's uh, eight gallons. A buck sixty. That's uh, two hundred and one dollars and sixty cents. Yeah, well, it's a buck six bits. You'll keep the change. Two hundred, George. You'll get yours. When the payoff's made, like everybody else. <laughs> it's not the same. I'm a hired hand, not a partner. Listen, great white hunter. You take the pennies when I get them and be glad. Or I'll have Flo here slap you silly. You want me to, Harry? I think you'd like it. Oh, well, slap's better than no touch at all. I remember African hyenas showed their teeth just like you too. Dirty smiling. George, I'm thirsty. Leave him alone. 
You know, you stink of those mangy animals, too. Go get us a couple bottles of pup. Never mind. The stink might sweat right through the bottles. Like to see the big mountain cat, George? You catch him yourself? I had a little help. <laughs> I guess. Oh, okay. Let's see this big fat cat of yours. Get too near the cage. He's mean. He don't like the smell of men. Where'd you buy him? Buy him? <laughs> I caught him. Trapped him, roped him, tied him off. You know, lions will try to stay you down if they can. And if you break, they'll make a try for you. There was a time once in Kenya, wandered about 200 yards from camp, no gun, stumbled onto a black-maned lion in the scrub, rose up and faced me. Well, it was a queer feeling, him looking at me and me staring right back at him. And he skins his teeth once, turns around and walks off. Harry, you're a liar. If you say so, George. You think you could wait him out? I'm looking at him. <laughs> I mean, if he was outside the cage. Harry, put the lock back on. I want my 200 bucks, George. I hate to lose you. You're a good man with cars. Give me my money. I'll leave Mays inside the dragnet. He's a nervous man like me, and he probably talks a lot. There. Pick it up. Put the lock back on that cage. You won't be mad at me after, will you, George? I had to do it. I gotta have that double C note. I'm just glad to see you got some guts. Now, go ahead. I wouldn't let him out. You know that. You can keep the two bills. Uh, it's only a scratch. Come on, get up. Make sure you pick up maze. What are you making? Got a good fortune. Chinese idol. Hmm. What's that stuff? Jade. Beautiful stone, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You like beautiful things, Howard. More than anything else in the world. Get away from them.
everybody here? Except Fandango. Did you keep those punts? Uh, I should have dumped them. Made me nervous. Cop stopped me. If you'd have searched me, we'd all have had it. You mean you would have had it, don't you, Mace? What's the sense of keeping these parts? Breach blocks and pins are like signatures, that's why. Besides, parts are hard to get. I'd have heist a state arsenal for this. Fast. Two minutes, 38 seconds. And blindfolded, only 42 seconds more. My baby can handle a Tommy gun like most men can't even handle an automatic. Machine Gun Kelly's my little baby. Best gun of them all. <laughs> that's funny. I was just thinking. Machine Gun Kelly, that's a hard nickname to say. See, what would be short for that? How about... Looking at me, you must have been worried sick. And that rough road you had me on just about shook me to pieces. Anybody stop you? Yeah, an officer on a cycle. Tall, good-looking blonde fella. And very polite and courteous. We talked about my little runabout for a while. He, he, he's an amateur mechanic. What do you think of that? Is it a check? 36000 Isn't somebody going to offer me a drink? My throat is just parched with dust. How would get the paper? There's some bourbon on the bureau. Bourbon? Haven't you got anything lighter than that? Like a cordial or something? We got bourbon. You want it or not? No, thank. I don't think so. I think maybe you better have one. Well, all right. If you insist, a small shot with a lot of water. You know, plenty of body and very little spirit. I'll get it. Read that. Yeah, everything worked out just fine, didn't it? Right here. Read it out loud. The state... Trust Bank of Lebanon was robbed this morning by two armed bandits with automatics and a machine gun. <laughs> they got over $41,000, and the bandits ignored securities and bonds. All of it. Well, there is all of it. I didn't even open the black bag. You better be nice, Fanny. Don't call me Fanny. And that could happen, you know. You know how newspapers exaggerate and everything, and maybe it was a teller or a cashier. It's another... Ah! Ah! He would be dumb enough to have it on him. And he thinks he's smart enough to charm his way out of anything, this guy. Oh, oh, don't touch me, I tell you, let me alone. I'm, I'm, I'm hurt, you hurt me. I'm, I'm hurt. Yeah, it's here. One pack's broken into. What he already took, we'll call his share. What's the matter? Can't you take a little joke or something? I want my cut, I tell you, I want my cut. You already got it. No, don't you try. I'm warning you. Just don't try it. Hello, give him some refreshments. <laughs> oh. Now, you know Fanny doesn't like strong liquor. Why don't you give him some cordial or something? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's the file on bank operators. A new bunch on our backs. I guess. Shall I try the use of weapons file? Might as well. I'm sorry I didn't spot any of them. Don't worry about it. We've got a lot more going for us than they have for them. Print files, mug files, MO files. And if they're not in there anywhere, they will be. They want to be known. Can't be important unless everybody knows what they've done. In a way, they actually want to be caught. We're going to check on machine gun specialists now. You still fooling with that thing? It's a different one. I finished the God of Good Fortune. This is the God of Death. He's an ugly looking character, isn't he? Oh, hey, look. What's the matter? Is it hot? You 
keep your junk away from me. What hurt you, George? Just a symbol. It's like the skull in a bottle of poison or the fires of death. You know, one of these days, your educated Weisenheimer ways are going to buy you a seat on a hot rock. Well, at least you're always threatening to, George. <laughs> are you crazy? Not here, not here. Don't shoot. Don't stay mad. George always gets upset about things like that. Don't ask him to hold off. I'm gonna carve a map of hell on your kisser. Don't, uh, for God's sake, don't. Come on. I'll stitch a new belt right across your belly. Come on. Drop that. Put the knife away. Open your coat. Loosen your arm. Go ahead. Try me. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Come on. You're crazy, George. Playing games? Better not be so noisy about it. There's a beat cop downstairs. Maybe he has nothing better to do than to pick you up for disturbing the peace. What's the matter, Howie? He looks sick. Oh, getting thick. Gonna have one that ends up in curls. And how's the boss, baby? That's me. Well, did you look it over? Better than that. The assistant teller thought he was a real chic. We had a talk. I told you, just look. Not try and be smart in you. Oh, well, he was easy. So's the bank. There'll be a lot of nice money coming in Saturday. There's a big construction outfit that pays Saturday night. The armored car makes the delivery. It's in the vault and checked out 15 minutes later. So what about the armored car? They leave soon as they get the receipt. About seven or eight minutes. Well, it gives us about three minutes with only the guard to worry about. Three minutes isn't enough. I'll work it out. We'll take two cars, two drivers, and two guns. No pickup. We can use Fandango to drive. I already stopped in to see him. He said fine. You mean his feelings weren't hurt? Oh. Uh, he said all was forgiven. But Fandango doesn't forget people mauling him easy. One of his buddies who had a mat on against him told me that uh, Fandango was waiting for a chance to even things up. But he'll talk about this deal, huh? Uh-huh. Uh, okay, Maze, you go down and talk to our friend Fanning. Tell him I want to set the plan. Tell him we meet at uh, Harry's gas station in about two hours. Okay. Hello? Sketch out a floor plan. I'll be back after one. Harry ought to clean up this place. It smells terrible around here. What a mess. Yeah, it does. Hey, where's Howard and Maze? They already know about the plan. There's no sense in making this a convention. Well, George, you didn't tell me yet what part I play in this, this time. That's what I wanted to ask you, Fanny. Don't ask me. I don't even know what bank you got set up. I mean the squealing and the sound of singing. George, sometimes you talk in riddles. You know, Fanny, 
One of your friends doesn't like you. You weren't nice to him, so he was talking. George, I don't, I don't like your sense of humor. Vanny, why don't you take the beating I gave you like a man? No! 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 Teller's cage is here. The vault's back here. The guard will be here. The alarms are here, here, and here. This door leads to the hallway. Down this side is the washroom, and the other way leads to the vault area. We'll be in the bank the same time the armored cops are there. Gives us an extra minute or so. The minute they leave, we'll move. Right then, Howard, you ask the teller if you can use the washroom. We go to the other way to the vault. I'll be over here by the alley. I thought you said we were in the bank. No guts to be alone for a couple of minutes? What's the matter with you? You want me to hold your hand for you? I'm going to have a chopper and a suitcase. I don't want even the chance for the guard to get curious. Now, look at here. The minute that armored car leaves, I'll be in the front door with a gun on everybody that might be there, including the guard. You pick the lettuce, Howard. And Mays, you'll be across the street. Now, you move right up front the minute you see me go in. You know, even being in the bank to pick up time, that's cutting it pretty close. That construction payroll crew could arrive too soon. Well, Flo's gonna be up about three blocks with a conked out car crosswise in the middle of the road. And poor Floy will be sitting there with tears on her face, as helpless as can be. That's right. And if tears don't stop him, honey, I can always show him a little leg. Sure, a little. I can help you. Shake a leg, Joe. We gotta pick up that payroll.
Get out of there. Ma, this is George. I wrote you about him. And never could pick your men, could you? I'm tired and I'm hungry, old lady. Let me oh, you up. punk. Ma, please. He's awfully cocky for a man who can't even crack a hick town bank. He does real good, Ma. It's, it's just that something happened. We didn't figure on it. I read all the clippings. The cops got a perfect description. You got a couple of months of trouble and worry. We're clear now. Otherwise, we wouldn't have come. Okay, go back to reading your magazines. And you wipe that chocolate off your chin and stop beating them. You're fat enough. That's a new girl? <laughs> Shut your mouth. She's my daughter. Uh, ain't we all? No respect. Oh, these young girls nowadays. Come on into the dining room. I'll get you something to eat. You hungry, George? Come on now. You sit right down here at the table. And I'll fix you up some nice cold chicken and potato salad. Frank! Come on in and see who's here. You no, know, your father was real worried about you. Would you like a little salad with that? Well, chicken and potatoes will be fine, Ma. I can heat the chicken up if you'd like. <sighs> Say, how about a nice belt of rye whiskey? Good stuff. Bonded warehouse stuff, 12 years old. Hey, that's for me. It's a wonder booze wouldn't make you sick, seeing as how you served two stretches for running it in. You tell your old lady to keep her wise cracks behind her teeth or she's going to be wearing false ones. I already do, smart Alex. Tell her. Ma! I could use the chicken. Right away. Have it in a jiffy. Frank! You! Frank, don't you want to come and see your daughter? Well, you look fine. Just fine. This is a friend of mine. Sure, Kelly. Machine gun Kelly. You bring one along? I always got one with me or close by. Hey, have a drink. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Too bad you lost your driver in that bank job. He was a good man, so we heard. Other fellow got away, though. That's good. Not so good when I see him again. Not your friend now? He run when he saw a cop's gun. Happens many a time. One wrong apple and the whole cider barrel goes sour. And I can yell about it funny times. Little things shake him. They're no good. You can't depend on them. You know, you gab too much. I don't like talking people. Get out of here. Well, sorry. Only trying to be friendly. Here we are. Now, don't be bashful. Eat up. It's not very fancy, but the food's good and plenty of it. There you are. Some people are making the headlines. Not you, though. Number one boy. Public enemy number one. Just because some bum stumbles over his own feet and shoots down a couple of feds, he ain't so much. <laughs> he ain't so much. I'd like a bourbon and water, please. I'll take it over there. I beg your pardon. My name's Philip Ashton. I'm a friend of Michael's. Michael? You call him Fandango, I believe. May I join you? Why? There's something you might like to know. Thank you. 
You have a friend named Kelly. He worked with two others, Mays and Howard. Howard blames Mr. Kelly for the loss of a certain large amount of money, the death of his friend and a shot of bomb. He joined with some other gentlemen in the pursuit of his profession, but he hasn't forgotten. He means to kill Kelly if he sees him. How is Fandango? Thank you. He had to lose his arm. He doesn't find it too difficult. Did he tell you how it happened? Yes. And what are you telling me about Howard for? This new bunch wants Kelly to stay out of banks altogether. They say he might die. Please, allow me. The whole trick is in riding with it like this. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Never fight a chopper. What you do is drift with it. <laughs> like... Oh! <laughs> oh, well, but that kicks a lot. <laughs> well, neat. But I like things that kick a lot. You know, like uh, pepper and cheap booze and a Tommy gun. But especially a big, blonde, beautiful broad. <laughs> Sure has the nicest sister. Yeah, and that makes you my brother-in-law. Yeah, that's that's a couple of relatives. Mm -hmm. There's no harm, see? It's all in the family. Mm -hmm. Hey, play something steppier, will you? Come on, sister, you show me, huh? You say so, brother. sit in the corner, girl. You ought to put a muzzle and leash on that. Ah, get out of here, old lady. You hit me. You wouldn't, George. You hit me. You're on the spot. Howard wants to kill you. He'll gun you down, George. You hear me? He's in with a new bunch. They're warning you. Everybody up. Girls got a right in this room. Go hold your wake someplace else. You get them out or they won't be much good to you either. Get them out. He's no good. His wives gave him the air, didn't they? You better wise up and do the same. Come on, girls. Don't stay in a room with that. They know where we are? No. It was you who didn't do right. Wasn't it? You know where they are? No. But I can find out. You weren't in the bank in time to cover the guard. This new crowd, are they big, Flo? Well, Howard isn't alone. Asking me? Something scared you, George? Yeah, I'm asking you. And tell me, George. It was you who did wrong. Flo, you know how some things get me. I can't help it. It, it comes all over me like a cold sweat. Well, tell me, George. You were scared, weren't you? 
Yeah, I was scared. But you're the only one knows that. I'm not afraid of anything else. You know that too, don't you? <laughs> sure, baby. I know. Oh, I've got to get Howard and the rest of them. All at one time. Got them where they hang out. Your name's Machine Gun Kelly, ain't it? Show me. Oh, shut up, Ma. George, there's only one thing to do. I'll turn him in for the Lebanon job. The daughter of mine's going fink? Why should George do what the cops can do better? Listen, this is inside. This guy's after Kelly. Then let Kelly take care. There's a mob behind Howard now. So all right, so let Kelly take him on. Unless he's yellow. Tough boy there, Machine Gun Kelly. He isn't running. George isn't afraid of any man living. Howard, huh? So they warned me out of the banking business, huh? We're gonna get out, all right. Why, Sugar? I'm doing all right? Well, that's nickels and dimes. And your old lady wants some headlines? I'm gonna give her some headlines. We're gonna get into something big. What's that, honey? Kidnapping. Are you sure she hasn't got anybody to meet her? Positive. I've been watching her for two weeks, haven't I? She was my kid. I won't let her come walking home from school alone. She only lives around the block. She doesn't have to cross any streets or anything. Looks like the last of them. Maybe she was sick today. Uh uh. I saw her go in this morning. Well, maybe she got sick in school and they sent her home. George. Funny looking little flapper. If I was her old man, I wouldn't pay a dime to get her back. Smile, George. Be sweet. Hi. Hi. Hello. Don't you remember me? I don't think we've ever met. Oh, you can just bet we did. You were about, uh, oh, so big then. How big? Oh, about, uh, so. Then I couldn't remember, could I? Well, you got me there. Hey, you know, your dad sent us over to pick you up. Hop in. I can't. I'm waiting for my nurse. Nurse? Yes, here she comes. Let's go. No, everything's set. The note's already on its way. We'll take her with us, too. Get the kid. You know, you're a very pretty little girl. How old are you? Nine. Go 
Come on, honey. Come on. Daddy's waiting. We're going to take your nurse, too. Come on. I don't understand. You don't have to. Scream and you die. Why don't you hold the kid on your lap? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Sit on my lap, Cheryl. Why can't we sit in the bathroom? Well, this is There's cozier. No room. This is much cozier, isn't it? We're just going for a little ride. It's all right, Cheryl. I'm here. You two, get out. You're late. We're here, ain't we? Get the other car. What are we doing way out here? It's all right, honey. Come on. Hurry it up, hurry it up. Go home and get the rest of everything. See you tonight. Kiss? Save it. Okay, let's go. Hit the radio. You still scared? You don't have to answer. But I want to tell you something. If that kid cries or squawks too loud, I'm blaming you. There's no price in your head, so I'm not going to worry about damaging a merchandise. You understand what I mean? Yes. You seem pretty cool. Maybe you're working up some cute ideas. Well, forget them. I see anything that bothers me. I'm not going to ask questions or wait for answers. So don't hang any step-ins to dry in the window. <laughs> step-ins in the window. There's a room in there you can sleep with a kid. Now, whenever you want, you can fool around out here, you know, play the radio. But when I say get in there, you do it. May we go in there now? If you want to. But leave that blanket on the window. Keep the door open all the time, even when you're sleeping. But Cheryl won't be able to sleep very well with the light coming in from this room. You see that she does. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. Canton, Ohio police report that nine-year-old Cheryl Vito may have been kidnapped. When the daughter of steel executive Andrew Vito didn't return from school with her nurse, Miss Lynn Grayson, a search was made and no sign of the child or the nurse was found. Authorities suspect that Miss Grayson only a day in the veto employee may have been the contact for a kidnap ring. No ransom note has been received as yet. Stay tuned to this station for further reports as they come through. <laughs> Did you hear that? Huh? How's it feel to be number one suspect? You going? To our room. Well, this time you didn't say may I. Aren't you a little young for giant steps? <laughs> Look at her, you made the great stone face laugh. I didn't know you were such a Weisenheimer. You smart off with me again. May I? Yes, you may. You may take three butterfly steps. <laughs> <laughs> we're just one great big butt of a light, didn't we? A ransom note has been delivered to the home of Andrew Vito. This afternoon, nine-year-old Cheryl Vito and her nurse, Miss Lynn Grayson, disappeared from the school grounds only a scant block and a half from the Vito home. Police have not released the details of the note as yet. This station will report on them as soon as possible. What are these two doing here? You're supposed to be back in the city. But the child's probably cold and frightened and hungry. And I'm not leaving till I see that she's all right. Listen, you kind-hearted, white-haired old granny. This ain't a weekend's fishing. 
Too many people up here out of the season and the whole works can blow. Don't bother me. You're supposed to be back handling the contact. Just came along for the ride, Kelly. I'll go on back. This way you can get rid of one of the cars, too. Hungry. Yeah, I am. Why did you bring a parade? I couldn't find one. I, I just brought some little things for the youngster. Gee, I could have brought some of Martha's things for you if I knew what size you were. It's awfully kind of you to think of Cheryl. Well, it's not her fault. Her daddy's rich. Is it, sweetheart? Are you my grandma? Heavens no, honey. But I'd like to have a little girl like you, though. There's only her father. She's all he has. Guess what's in here? I can't see it. I don't know. There you are. Something to keep you company. I have Linda keep me company. <laughs> Say thank you. Thank you. I'll take care of the baby doll, and you can take care of me. I don't know what you have to do with this. Please, won't you help us? Now, look, don't ask something I can't give. You just do as you're told, and the both of you will be home before you know it. You hungry? No. Well, the little one is. Go on, get out there and earn your keep. Come on, go ahead. Oh, no, no. Look at here. Oh, oh, you don't see her crying, do you? And she's even littler than you. More information on the veto kidnapping. The contents of the ransom note have been released to the press. It's on a standard Western Union form, the message cut out of newspapers and magazines. It reads, your daughter is safe. She will stay safe as long as you follow instructions. Go to the police if you want to but be ready for the worst if they get in the way. We want $100,000. Stay by your phone. Remember the number you hear. Okay, get your old lady and Frank out of here. Ma's with the kid. She ought to buy a cap in a rocking chair. Very funny, Georgie. Well, I guess I'd better see this is clean. How old are you? What? How old? 25. Hmm. Married? No. Oh, that's right. They, uh, they said miss on the radio, didn't they? You got a boyfriend? In a way. Nice guy? Yes. Big? Tall? Fairly. Big as me? No. Is he good? You know, as long as we're here, and uh, we're going to be here for a couple of more days, there's no reason why we can't get some good out of it, huh? I mean, put the kid to bed. Go on. Now, don't start yelling. You wouldn't want to wake the kid, would you? Well, there's nothing to be afraid of, sweet face. I just want to show you how to live a little, that's all. You need a big man. Okay, big man. Sit down. That's a big gun, George. That's right. Why don't you go outside and take a look around? Yeah. Thank you. You're going to be a lot of trouble. This station has kept you informed about the kidnapping of little Cheryl Vito. Now we turn over our facilities to her father in hopes that his words may have some effect upon the people who have taken her from him. I want to say to whoever has my little girl that I'm ready to pay anything you ask. I got the telephone call, but I couldn't hear the number you hung up too fast. Please, please call again. What's he trying to prove? You know I've called in the police, but they promised not to interfere. Now, please believe me, this isn't a trick. I just didn't get the number. I just want my little girl back. She's all I have. 
Please believe me. Please believe me. That was Daddy. The people of this entire nation beg the kidnappers to do nothing in panic. There is no trap possible here. Please call again. Call again. Get Broad Eyes in bed. Past our bedtime anyhow. Come on, come on. Do you think you have a talent for this type of thing, Mr. Kelly? Get in there. Your girlfriend's back. I heard it on the radio. I don't like the sound of it. That's nothing. Frank must have gotten a little nervous. Okay. You go back and tell him to speak clear this time and do it now. It can wait. It'll make Vito riper. Get down to the store and call now. Well. We ask again that the kidnappers please call back. Mr. Vito was prepared to cooperate fully with your demands. Please call back. The hanging's too good. We use the chair now. That's even better. The kind of people who do something like that. Yes, ma'am. I got the wrong cigarettes. My husband smokes camels. Oh. Better make it a carton. A whole carton? Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. We ask again that the kidnappers please call back. Mr. Vito was prepared to cooperate fully with your demands. We will repeat this every 15 minutes until we receive further instructions. You know, this uh, kidnapping business is awful. Oh, yes, it is. Well, what kind of people? What kind? Oh, hanging's too good for them. It's just what I said. Exactly. Well, I gotta get going. Okay. Uh, stop around later? Maybe. Haven't seen you around before. My husband and I rented a cabin for a few days. Hunting? No. Hunting's out of season, and you know it. My husband's a writer. He writes articles. We thought he'd write better up here. Just like to know who's about. Uh, just in case anything happens, we can help you. Call if you need me. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Ever so much. <sighs> What? Uh, tobacco for his pipe? Mm -mm. Smoke cigarettes. Only one thing to do. Call him up. Oh, you can put a sack of flour in the car, if you please. A whole sack? Mm-hmm. If you please. Yes, ma'am. Anything wrong? No, I just want to see you off all right. Woman late at night's not always safe. I'll be careful. How long will you be staying? No idea. Have you been here long? Mm-hmm. Got here this afternoon. Right from New York, huh? From the middle of the city to the middle of the country. Well, good night. Be careful. Uh -huh. Get something? Call in. The little lady must be expecting to do a batch of bacon, uh, bread and biscuits. Yeah? Brought a whole sack of flour. Susie, this is Freddie. 
You just put a couple of calls through from the general store. Where to? Just one. To Youngstown, Ohio. Susie, put me through to the state police. I knew I should have waited till morning. What's the matter? A cop was in the store. I put a call through to Frank and double talked. He got the message all right. When I came back, the cop was still poking around the car and asking questions. How many did you have to answer? No, I don't think enough to hurt. Wrap the kid up. We're getting out of here. What for? So some cop knows us around the car. Maybe he's just lonely for a good-looking broad. Oh. We're clearing out to a gas station. Wrap the kid up. We repeat the message to the abductors of little Cheryl Vito. Mr. Vito was prepared to cooperate fully with your demands. Well, here's the tracer on that Youngstown, Ohio call. It's a bar called the Blue Sky. A uh, public booth in it. Got a man there? Yeah, posted one as soon as I found out. The Ohio office is checking it out for us. Clinton. Okay. They just identified Howard as one of the men mixed up in the Lebanon bank job in that Elizabethtown mess. That state boy described a Louisville paper found in the suspect car. Those two bank jobs six months ago, Lebanon and Elizabethtown. Whoever gunned Howard and the others might be tied in. One of them used a machine gun. The mob was sieved. It's possible. The Elizabethtown job got Mays killed and Howard hit. Check up on everybody who knew either one of them. We need more. A set of phony license plates, a newspaper, the description of a girl. We have them running. Let's hope they don't dump the kids so they can travel faster. We repeat the message to the abductors of little Cheryl Vito. Your message has been received. We will repeat this every 15 minutes until we receive further instructions. Now we can make the pickup on the first payment. Apple, you go into You don't the... give the orders, Flo. Oh, we planned it this way. That's why Apple's in. Yeah, well, now I changed my mind. You don't mean I'm out? No, but we're bringing somebody else in. We had to cut Harry in extra ziz. If you didn't run from the cabin, we wouldn't have. It was you who almost blew the lid off back there at that general store. I did. I did nothing. Nothing. What about your, uh, your little goof at the Elizabethtown job, huh? A coffin scared you silly. Don't say any more, Flo. You know, I don't like to be called about that. You don't like? We oh, silly, scared bum. Not just of coffins, graveyards, and things. He's scared to die, to get hurt, to do anything. Well, everybody is, Flo, everybody. Not like you. You were peddling watered-down gin when I picked you up. I gave you the machine gun, the name, the reputation. I gave you a backbone. Look, there's no locks. You didn't have to stick. You know why? Because you were dumb enough and scared enough. I could use you, make you do anything I wanted you to. You were my gun hand. Don't shame me, Flo. Don't shame me. I could have had 50 better in you. And I still can. They wouldn't push around so easy. And you're the one that's scared. You're scared when your looks went, you'd have nobody. <sighs> that's a right smart guy. But I was gonna leave you after this one. I finally pushed you to the big time, the big kill. I wasn't planning for you to be around to spend the money. Hello, you're not being very smart. Because I'm gonna kill you now. Ah, uh, you haven't got the guts. There was Howard and his mob, wasn't there? Because I made you do it. I made you beg me to understand why you were afraid of dying and things about death. I mothered you till you went out to prove to me you were a man. <laughs> but 
everybody knows you're not. You were always so soft and so easy. I never knew that... <laughs> Leave her alone. <laughs> Shut her up or I'll slap her silly. You want to be as brave as your man? No, baby. You want a new man now? Sure. Sure. Get your hands off me. I don't want your help. I feel sorry for you, George. I never saw anybody look the way you did when she told you about yourself. Georgie shouldn't do things like that. He's hitting old Harry again. Apple, slap the boy's wrist, huh? Go ahead, Apple. And I'll peel and core you. Put the gun away, George. You must be crazy, Flo. Well, Apple? About time I killed somebody. Go ahead. <sighs> oh, we wouldn't have made a very good team anyway. That's how I like it, baby. Flo, get her and a kid in the other room. Uh -huh. Go for your gun. Oh! Harry, pick him up, take him outside. Harry? Yeah? I ain't never gonna hit you again. I know, George. Blue Sky? It's Fandango there. Put him on, will you? Why are you calling Fanny? I need him for a job. He hates you. We're not scared up, are we? Besides, we need him to make the pickup. Hey, Fandango? Hey, this is George Kelly. Machine Gun Kelly. I got a job for you. What do you like better, money or revenge, huh? I'm not mad at you anymore, George. Oh. Say, you really made the headline this time, didn't you? Well, where should I drop the money? Oh, all right. Bye. All right, now. How did you lose your arm? 1917, the war, you know. You were about 15 then. Oh? Um, uh, may I have a cigarette, please? Thank you. Actually, I lost it when I was a boy. Match, please. I was working in a circus as a trapeze performer, and one night I fell and smashed it badly. Who was the call from? What call? The one at the blue sky. Oh, that. A friend. Who? I told you, a friend. Tell me again. His name's Philip Ashton. If you don't believe me, you can go call him and check. We will. Well, anything else you want to know? No, you can walk now. Oh. Oh, thank you very much. Bye. Well, that's it. He'll step wrong sooner or later. I've got my best man on him. Let's hope he's the pickup man. The kidnappers contacted Beto. He's all set to deliver 50,000 in cash. If Fandango's the one, we can follow him through to the little... He got away. Where? Down the hallway. Well, how did it happen? Well, he stalled for a minute and then ducked into the ladies' restroom. What? Yes. What did you say? Listen, you want the kidnapper? 
We'll shut up and don't stall for a trace. The gang is run by Machine Gun Kelly. Later on, I'll tell you where. That call may have been from our friend, Mr. Fandango. The head of the gang is George Kelly, sometimes known as Machine Gun. When rabbits roar, it's a bad time. Harry? Yeah? You feel all right? Okay. You're a good boy, Harry. <laughs> you know, you've been real good this time around. You're no longer a hired hand. I'm gonna make you a partner. That's right, a full partner. One third of the pie is yours. Third, hmm? With Fandango, that makes four of us. Well, Fanny won't be playing fair. At least I don't think he will. He'll be picking up the money pretty soon. Why don't you take the car? Get down and meet him after he gets it, you see? But don't walk right up to him. Follow him a little. And if he doesn't head straight for the meeting place, you bring him in. I got it. They all right? We're both asleep. That's good. You worried about him? I'm leaving, George. I don't have to tell you now. Hurry back, huh? I'll hurry. No, I'm not worried about those two in there. I was just hoping they'd sleep through so they won't know. Know what? They were killed. Flo, we're not going for the hundred. We'll take fifty. That'll be enough for me for a while. You? Well, you know I mean us. We can stall the cops a couple of more weeks by having more instructions and messages go through. By that time, we can be out of the country. You know, all we have to do is hire a couple of blind stiffs to make calls we won't know anything about. Maybe it's better the kid won't have to bother growing up. You ready, Mr. Vito? Yes. Now, this money doesn't mean a thing to me. You're not staking out this place where I'm going. Don't you worry, Mr. Vito. We won't make a move until we know your little girl is safe. All we can do is wait and hope the informer calls us. We can pick up Frank Alstrom and his wife now. Good. Our little bird, a gas station out on the highway. Hi, Fanny. Oh, Harry. Going home? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I was. I gotta go pick up my car. Good. I'll keep you company. 
Oh, all right then. Would you mind carrying this for me? Because I, I want to light a cigarette. Not... My good arm's occupied, Fanny. Oh. Turn to the left. Get on of the highway. Left? Meeting place isn't that way. No kidding. <laughs> We figured you'd yell copper, so we changed our minds a little bit. Oh, fine. Well, it's all right with me. Are we going to your place? Mm-hmm. You'll be glad to say hello to your playmates, sweetheart. Now, Harry, don't be cruel. You were following me very well. I didn't even see you, and I could hardly hear you. I guess your experiences as a great white hunter must have... Knock it off, cripple. Is our little friend. Hello, Fink. What, what do you mean by that, Flo? Just stop! What's the matter? Honey, what happened? I scream. Someone was screaming. Ballet dancer. I was in a coffin. You uh, put me in a coffin. You're crazy, honey. You had a bad dream. Well, pretty soon you're going to be in one. Shut her up. Kelly. George Kelly. We're out here, Kelly. How did they find out? Me, me. I told them, Georgie boy, yeah. I was weak enough to be pushed around, mangled, maimed. That's what you thought. Now they're out there. Go on, go fight them. Go fight them. Yeah, yeah, make those dreams of yours about, about coffins and burials come true. Not you, Fanny. Yeah, me, you stupid animal. Me. Yeah, I, I told him. You think when you were talking to me over the telephone, I didn't hear that mountain lion? <laughs> it's a sound I couldn't forget very easy, could I, George? You thought you were a wise guy, huh? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Harry, stay away from the window. They'll shoot. They'll kill us. <laughs> Harry, stay away. You wanted the jungle, they'll live in it. <laughs> Harry, don't don't shoot. Don't shoot. <laughs> they got a sniper out there. We'll all get killed. Oh, no, we won't. You out there! Listen to me! The little girl and her nurse are here! You keep shooting, and we'll put them in a place where they'll be hit! Are you Flora Becker? Yes, I am! We have your mother and father in custody as accessories. It's all over. There's no place to run, even if we let you out of there. Don't do anything foolish. Let the child and her nurse go, and we'll offer a recommendation to the courts. Did you hear that? We'll live. <laughs> you always want to give up, don't you? Well, Flo, why die for nothing? Just to show that we got some guts. Flo, I don't want to show mine with my life spilling out of them. You watch it, Georgie. Your shadow will scare you to death someday. Flo, please do what I say. Put the gun down. Uh-uh. Machine gun Kelly. You liked being called that, didn't you? Well, I made you. And I'll make your name stick, whether you like it or not. With those two dead, you get the chair. And I'll plead that I'm a woman. And I'm scared of you. It'll be a nice touch, huh? I never wanted any of it. I didn't want to be public enemy number one. I didn't want any part of it, Flo. It was all your fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. You all right, miss? 
This one got it in the throat. He's dead. You the tough man in the crowd? You got a tough name, Kelly. Why don't you shoot it out? Because I knew you'd kill me. Machine gun Kelly. Come on along, pop gun Kelly. Thank <laughs> you.